Hello, welcome to the workshop. Firstly, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who watched last week's video. It had a great response and some fantastic comments. Thank you very much. In this week's video, we've got a number of things to accomplish. We've got a lot of finishing touches to do to the workshop build. I've got the hardwood trim to put around the worktops. I've got the kickboards to go along the bottom of the base units. And also, as a result of last week's video, we had some problems with our table saw. So I'm going to be delving into that and stripping that down to see exactly what the problem is. There's a number of things to get done this week, so please stick around and enjoy the video. Cheers. One of the finishing touches in the workshop is to put the kickboard on the new base units. So I'm going to rip some strips out of some 3 quarter inch plywood and then I'll show you how the plastic clips go together to fix it in place. To fix the kickboard to the bottom of the base units, the legs come with these plastic clips. It's a two part clip. One part of the clip gets screwed to the back of the kickboard. The other part of the clip then just slides into that and that gives you some lateral movement. And then it's simply a case of offering your kickboard up to your leg and then snapping it into position. As you can see there, it just clips in. So if you ever need to remove them in the future, it's simply a case of just pulling the kickboard off. I've laid all the kickboards out along the length of the cabinets to see where the joins are going to go. I want to make sure that I've positioned the joins where there aren't any feet. And then they won't interfere with the brackets. How I'm going to join these kickboards is I've got them clamped to a straight edge to keep them level. I've got the joint nice and tight. And I'm just going to use this block of wood as like a fish plate on the back. Just to hold that joint nice and tight together. I'll put some pencil marks where the centres of the legs are. And now I'm just going to screw these brackets to the back. slide the little clip in and then it's ready to be pushed into place. All the clips are screwed to the back of the kickboard now. It just remains to lift it into position and click it onto the legs. One of the jobs in the shop that we've been meaning to address is how we move the planar thicknesser about. When we originally purchased it, we brought this dolly and it's got movable casters on the front, but it's got fixed wheels on the back. And the only problem with that is it's not very mobile. Obviously you can wheel it forwards and backwards and the front goes from side to side but the back stays rigid, so it's really awkward to move around the shop. So we want to do away with this dolly. And then what we've done is we've purchased some heavy duty casters, which are all swivel. And then what we'll do is we'll put a piece of wood on the bottom of the planer and then screw the casters to it. And hopefully that will give us a bit more maneuverability. What we're going to do with the new dolly, 
we've purchased two casters which are just movable wheels and we purchased another two casters with manual brakes so that when the tool's in use we can stamp on one of these brakes and that will lock that caster to stop it moving around when we're using it. To secure the new board to the bottom of the planer what we've done is we've taken a batten of wood, drilled some holes in it and then we've got a T-nut, captive nut in the back of that and then I've done a recess in the board with a nut and a washer and then I'm just going to screw that to this batten and then that should pull the two together. I've doubled up the plywood base to give me an inch and a half thickness of material in which to screw the casters into. It just gives me a bit more meat for the screws to bite into. All the casters are on now, planer's secured to its new base and the good thing about it now is you can easily wheel it around in the shop and put it wherever you want it to go. You can lock the wheels off and then it's nice and solid, it's not going to go anywhere. Flick them back up. Excellent, that's going to be much more usable. Last week when we were building the pocket hole station, we noticed that the saw was binding up a little bit when we were cutting the wooden pieces for the, for the station and it seems to be a bit tight in here. So today we're going to take the saw apart and just see what's causing that to bind up on that blade. Right, we've taken the motor apart and the table saw and the first thing that we noticed when we took the brushes out is one of them's actually broken and there was a very small piece that was just rattling around inside the motor. Um, I don't think that's going to cause the binding issue that we had but obviously that would need to be replaced. What you've got here is a gearbox on the front of the motor. There's a gear reduction, obviously the motor spins at a very fast speed and then by gear ratio that transfers down and spins the arbor at a much slower speed in relation to the motor. That so gives you a bit of mechanical advantage and what I've noticed here is there's a, a lot of play in the bearings on this gearbox. Now I'm not sure with the age of this saw whether we'll be able to get any replacement parts for that bearing. Um, so this might be a terminal condition I think. As you can see the rotor there has got a hell of a lot of wobble in it. And it feels very rough when I turn that, it's grinding on those gears. So I think that's what's causing our issue here. A small bearing at the top of the rotor here, that seems quite good. There doesn't seem to be any play in there, but there's definitely significant play on this gearbox. So unfortunately this one might have to just uh, remain for spares. And we might have to uh, purchase a new one I think. This week's video has been a combination of a few things, but we've achieved quite a lot. I think we've finished off these bench units really nicely. This trim on the outside of the worktops and the kickboards really do set them off. I'm really pleased how they've turned out. We've got the thickness of planer now moving around the workshop easier. So that's going to help us out greatly on future builds. Unfortunately, we couldn't save the table saw. It's seen a lot of work and I'm not surprised that those bearings have finally given up the ghost. But we've put an order in for a new table saw, so next week hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate that on the next project. So give me a thumbs up, please subscribe if you haven't done already, look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers!